If no, then let's come to here, right? So we have finished the differential pair discussion. But the question now is, in a real world, everything, I mean, at least for human, right? Mostly it's a single ender, it's not differential, right? Uh, when you hear the sound, you don't really try to sense the difference of two signal. Although your ear, ear is kind of not really differential, it just helps you to sense the distance. But let's say for your left ear, you just sense the absolute pressure, right, of the air in, in, instead of something differential, and you get the sound, right? So we need to convert to single ender input eventually, right? I start with a differential input. I go through multi stages of amplification, right? And then eventually I need to go back to the real world to single ender. What can we do? A naive way, of course, is that I have differential input here from the previous stage. This is a differential amplifier. I just take one of them. Isn't that I converted it successfully? Yeah. So what is the problem of this circuit? Or, or the cons? The, uh, yeah. Why, why um, this is not a good way of use of resources? Any suggestion? V out is only connected to one of the... We out is only connected to one of the output. What is the problem? There's no noise projection. Okay. So no. Noise. Rejection. In the last stage, right? If I only connect it to one, right? Then that's not good. I right? um, Maybe it's better than none, but... At the last stage, is usually larger signal, uh, maybe better, but still, I ingest some noise, right? What else? Do you remember what is, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, drop the low, you will cause problem, but uh, yeah, uh, maybe this is all related to my answer. So you only have one side to support the low, yeah? But let's say the low is okay, not a problem. Let's say we design it well. What is the gain of a differential amplifier? GM times R. Is it, G is it GM RO, a GM RD, or two GM RD for a differential pair? GMRD, right? We try many times, half circuit, right? Because we have, we double the input or we also double the output. Now, can you tell me what is the problem again? Only half of the gain. Right? Because I only take half, I have double input, but you only take one of the outputs instead of both the, of the output. Then I only uh, get half of the gain, right? And when I get half of the gain, that is, uh, you say, oh, I don't care about, uh, only have half of the gain. If you don't care, but then you means that you double the power consumption, right? But, but let me don't say this, because if you read it, then you are going to, uh, again, you can say this, maybe I say it in this way, right? Compare to, uh, let's say in this case, just common source, right? You doubled, the power, right? Because you need to have two branches. You double the area, right? So you waste something. So this is not a good idea, right? So what can we do? Simulation. Okay, but maybe, uh, maybe later I want to finish this uh, uh, asymmetric differential pair first, and then we go back to the simulation. Is this a differential pair? Well, I'm, that is a bad, very bad question. Question. We still call it differential pair, but what I'm asking is this absolutely symmetric? No, right? Because here is connected to here, so you cannot use half circuit technique. So how do you solve this circuit for the gain? 
you really need to solve the KCLKVL for the four transistor, right? So you can refer to the textbook if you're interested in that, and we are not going to spend time on that. The only good thing is this, it turned out the gain is the same as a common source amplifier after some simplification, right? What is the, uh, what is the differential pair gain? Again, you just told me it's GM out out, right? This is also GM out out, okay? But we definitely cannot use virtual ground concept. So we are not going to solve it, but we want to intuitively understand how come this gain is not half, okay? So for example, if I increase this one by delta V on the left, right? And then what happened to this voltage? Just intuitively. This look like what type of amplifier? Input is at gate, output is at where? Yeah, looks like common source because input is at gate, output as, as a drink. You can argue, say this is not common source because P is not grounded. You're absolutely right. But I'm talking about intuition. Even it is not grounded, but it's just like the inertia. I already don't know how a transistor operates. I increase the gate voltage, probably it's going to increase the currents in the drain, right? And what will happen to the output voltage? Is it going to increase or decrease for common source? Decrease because it has a negative gain. And the only reason is because you increase the current, then this is what? What type of connection is this? Dial connector. So it is just a resistor, right? Right? So it's like 1 over GM. What is the impedance? Very good. 1 over GM3 parallel RO3. So this is, looks like a common source. It's not a common source, but you expect it should behave like a common source, except the magnitude is not GM one times one, one over GM three, right? But the trend should be correct. This one go up, this will go down. Now, if this goes down, what type of amplifier is this? If I only want to see how this signal propagate to here, Okay, you say it's common source. Can you tell us how? Because it's a PMOS. Good. So this is source, VDD is source. Excellent. And? Yeah. And a drink. Thank you. Very good. Right? So in the exam, in the interview, if you're nervous, just go back this step by step. Don't rush. This is PMOS. Higher potential is source, lower is drain. Input connected to gates, output connected to drain. So it's common source. This is a real common source. But however, this is the loading of the common source. This loading is not constant on the other hand. Okay, so it's not, you cannot find it easily, right? But anyway, I know that when the V in, V come down, what will happen to V out? Huh? Is it going to reduce or increase? You say increase, why? Because common source has a negative gain. Good, thank you. Okay. I'm talking about differential input, so when the left goes up, the right needs to go down, right? What will happen to this point in that case if this one if this one goes down? Again, this looks like what? Common source. So it must go in the opposite direction, right? So this one will go up, right? So both of them add together in the same direction. And that kind of explains why 
you are able to get this gain, you can conserve the gain, right? Preserve the gain, right? But the final uh, message here is that, yeah, you good to understand if you are, want to challenge yourself, read the test book. Uh, and this is the final game. Very important. Output is the single and the output. Okay. And input is a differential input. That is the game we are talking about. Okay. And then it is equal to GMN. Same equation as what we have for the differential pair, symmetric differential pair or, right, times the output impedance. Because this one basically is just our out. By looking down and looking up. Okay. Any questions? Right. So you do need this equation because I can tell you after all, only this equation is, I mean, this is one of the most important equation when you design your circuit because you need to have a single end output eventually, right? So, so it's nothing. You just treat this as a symmetric pair and then use the same equation. That's it. But there are lots of reasoning here. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. So in this circuit, the out is once again only connected to one of them, which means there's no noise rejection. How would we Oh, okay. No, no. But has noise rejection because of the way it is connected. You need to prove it, but you kind of Understand also because you have contribution from both sides, right? So it kind of uh, can cancel the noise. Yeah. Okay. So I forgot to say this. So this is the good good thing. Okay. Any questions? Let's take a 